Why, hello, it's Miss Gina. And we're on chapter six of Charlotte's Web. And the chapter's called Summer Days. And so you're at story time, chapter six, Summer Days, with Miss Gina. Hi, Miss Gina. Thanks for coming back and joining us again. And so we're on chapter six. Six. We have six birds. One, two, three, four, five, six. One bluebird, two bluebirds, three bluebirds, four bluebirds, five bluebirds, six bluebirds. Now we're going to start chapter six. We're going to jump right in. It's very short. The early summer days on the farm are the happiest and fairest days of the year. Lilacs bloom and make the air sweet and then fade. Apple blossoms come with the lilacs and bees visit around among the apple trees. The days grow warm and soft. School ends and children have time to play and to fish for trout in the brook. Avery often brought a trout home in his pocket, warm and stiff and ready to fry for supper. Now that school was over, Fern visited the barn almost every day to sit quietly on her stool. I bet Wilbur loved that. The animals treated her as an equal. The sheep lay calmly at her feet. Around the 1st of July, the workhorses were hitched to the moving machine, and Mr. Zuckerman climbed into the seat and drove into the field. All morning, you could hear the rattle of the machine as it went Round and round, round and round. While the tall grass fell down behind, the cutter bar and long green swatches. Next day, if there was no thunder shower, all hands would help rake and pitch and load, and the hay would be hauled to the barn in the high hay wagon. So they were bailing hay. Cool. We have a lot of hay barns around where I live. You can say hay all the time. Hey, hey. Not hey, hey, but hey for cows and animals. With Fern and Avery riding at the top of the load, then the hay would be hoisted, sweet and warm, into the big loft until the whole barn seemed like a wonderful bed of timothy and clover. It was fine to jump in and perfect to hide in. And sometimes Avery would find a little snake in the hay <laughs> and would add it to the other things in his pocket. I'm not sure I want to know what's in his pocket. Early summer days are a jubilee time for birds. In the fields, around the house, in the barn, in the woods, in the swamp, everywhere, love and songs and nest and eggs. From the edge of the woods, the white-throated sparrow, which must come all the way from Boston, calls, oh, Peabody, 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 on an apple bough, and Phoebe teeters and wags its tail and says, Phoebe, Phoebe. The song sparrow, who knows how brief and lovely life is, says, sweet, 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 interlude, sweet, 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 interlude. If you enter the barn, the swallows, swallows swoop down from their nests and scold, cheeky, cheeky, they say. In early summer, there are plenty of things for a child to eat and drink and suck and chew. Dandelion stems are full of milk, Clover heads are loaded with nectar. The frigid air is full of ice cold drinks. Everywhere you look is life. Even the little ball of spit on the weed stalks, if you poke it apart, has a green worm inside it. We always loved honeysuckles. Ooh, you could tear the end off and you could suck the sweet nectar in the honeysuckle. They smelled so wonderful, the fragrance just so sweet, and they tasted so good. And on the underside of the leaf of the potato vine 
are the bright orange eggs of the potato bug. It was on a day in early summer that the goose eggs hatched. This was an important event in the barn cellar. Fern was there, sitting on her stool. When it happened, except for the goose herself. Charlotte was the first to know that the goslings had at last arrived. How many were there? Do you remember how many eggs the goose was sitting on? Was it one, two, three, four? Is it five eggs? Was it six eggs? Seven eggs? Oh, it was eight eggs. Yeah, 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 I remember. Eight, eight, eight. Eight eggs. Positively, evilly, evilly. Yes, she was sitting on eight eggs. So we have eight goslings now. Oh, that's exciting. So, so the spider, Charlotte, she knows they've come. So the goose knew a day in advance that they were coming. She could hear their weak voices calling from inside the egg. She knew they were in a desperately cramped position inside the shell and were most anxious to break through and get out. So she sat quite still and talked less than usual. That must have been hard for her. When the first gosling poked its gray-green head through the goose's feathers and looked around, Charlotte spied it and made the announcement. I am sure, she said, that every one of us here We'll be gratified to learn that after four weeks of unremitting effort and patience on the part of our friend, the goose, she now has something to show for it. The goslings have arrived. I offer my sincere congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you, said the goose, nodding and bowing shamelessly. Thank you, said the gander. Congratulations, said, shouted Wilbur. How many goslings are there? I can see one. There are seven, said the goose. Fine, said Charlotte. Seven is a lucky number. Luck had nothing to do with it. This, said the goose. It was good management and hard work. At this point, Templeton showed his nose from his hiding place under Wilbur's trough. He glanced at Fern, then crept cautiously toward the goose, keeping close to the wall. Everyone watched him, for he was not well-liked, not trusted. Look, he began in his sharp voice, you say you have seven goslings. There were eight eggs. This sounds like a math problem. What happened to the other egg? Why didn't it hatch? It's a dud, I guess, said the goose. What are you going to do with it? Continued Templeton, his little round beady eyes fixed on the goose. You can have it, replied the goose. Roll it away and add it to that nasty collection of yours. So eight minus one is Seven. So there are seven goslings, and Templeton took the eighth egg away because it's no good. It's a bad egg, I guess you could say. What are you going to do with it? So he's rolling it to his nasty collection. Templeton had a habit of picking up unusual objects around the farm and storing them in his home. He saved everything. Certainly, certainly, certainly said the gander. You may have the egg, but I'll tell you one thing, Templeton. If I ever catch you poking, oking, oking your ugly nose around our goslings, I'll give you the worst pounding a rat ever took. And the gander opened his strong wings and beat the air with them to show his power. That's what he did, scare Templeton so he wouldn't mess with his baby goslings. Yeah, he was strong and brave, but the truth is, both the goose and the gander were worried about Templeton, and with good reason. 
The rat had no morals. He didn't make good choices. No conscience, no scruples. He didn't feel bad when he did something bad. No consideration, no decency, no milk of rodent kindness, no compunctions, no higher feeling, no friendliness, no anything. He would kill a gosling if he could get away with it. The goose knew that. Everybody knew that. With her broad bill, the goose pushed the unhatched egg out of the nest and the entire company watched in disgust while the rat rolled it away. Even Wilbur, who could eat almost anything, was appalled. That means they, ugh. Imagine what, wanting a junky old rotten egg, he muttered. A rat is a rat, said Charlotte. She laughed at tinkling little laugh. <laughs> but my friends, if that ancient egg ever breaks, this barn will be untenable. That means they wouldn't be able to hang around. It would stink very, very much. It would be bad. Ew. What's that mean? Asked Wilbur. It means nobody will be able to live here on account of the smell. A rotten egg is a regular stink bomb. I won't break it, snarled Templeton. I know what I'm doing. I handle stuff like this all the time. He disappeared into his tunnel, pushing the goose egg in front of him. He pushed and nudged till he succeeded in rolling it into his lair under the trough. That afternoon, when the wind had died down and the barnyard was quiet and warm, they grew. The gray goose led her seven goslings off the nest and out into the world. Mr. Zuckerman spied them when he came with Wilbur's supper. Well, hello there, he said, smiling all over. Let's see. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. There are seven. Now, isn't that lovely? And here's a picture of Templeton taking his egg. That's Templeton. He's got the egg right there. There's the goose and the gander, or vice versa. Let's see. This is the goose, the one laying on the eggs, and the gander standing beside her. This is the girl and that's the the man and the woman or the female and male bird a gander is a male goose so that was the chapter summer days and the next chapter is chapter seven <laughs> just like how many goslings we have and it's called bad news do you like to get bad news i don't bad news that'll be next so we had one picture in that, one drawing. Or did you like that drawing? Can you see Fern sitting there? There's Fern, and there's Charlotte up in a red right there. They're right there. And so she announced when they came, when they arrived. And so next time we'll be on Chapter 7, and I hope you enjoyed that story. Remember to read more in 2024 and grow your brain. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.